Wind turbines extract kinetic energy from the wind to convert it into electrical energy. In this video, we will see, from an aerodynamic point of view, how they manage to do it. Another topic we will be trying to cover is the main design decisions targeting to maximize the energy production yield. At Energy Technology Sherpa, we want to bring you this channel to get acquainted with technologies and investments in the energy sector, primarily clean energy technologies. Sherpa is a key concept as we want to be the right companion for you in a journey that is difficult somehow. The energy available in the wind varies with the cube of the wind speed. How much of that energy is a wind turbine capable of capturing? We have already indicated that the energy available in the wind varies with the cube of the wind speed. Therefore, it is easy to calculate the power per square meter as a function of the wind speed. In the graph, we have represented that available power up to 30 meters per second, which would be the beginning of a Category 1 hurricane. Wind speed variations along the year can be characterized in terms of probability distribution and the Weibull distribution is very representative of that variation. So, we can represent the cumulative probability distribution for low and high mean wind speeds. Above certain wind speeds, its low probability does not compensate for the extra cost of the system to support the loads. Even above a certain speed, it is necessary to stop the system to avoid damages to it. The limits of the area shaded in blue represent the power curve of the system. If we compare it with the power curves of commercial wind turbines, we will understand their origin. The power coefficient defines the relationship between the actual power and the maximum available. What it measures is the effects of the aerodynamic, mechanical and electrical efficiency of the system. Let's use a stream tube with a given wind speed and pressure. If we introduce a system that is capturing the kinetic energy from the wind, the tube stream will suffer a deceleration. As the mass of the wind does not change, the stream will expand. Nearby the device the pressure will oscillate, up and down, recovering its original level. Dr. Albert Betz was a German physicist. He found that there is a wind speed at the device position that maximizes the power coefficient. This limit of the power coefficient is known as Betz's limit. The limit is caused because the stream tube has to expand upstream the device and so the cross section of the free stream tube is smaller than the device section. You will have noticed that the limit does not depend on the type of wind generator, since at no time was it necessary to give any characteristic of it. To date, no wind turbine has been designed which is capable of exceeding this limit. In physics and fluid mechanics, a boundary layer is a layer of fluid near a bounding surface where the effects of viscosity are significant. So, when referring to the atmosphere this boundary layer can be as shallow as 50 meters in the Arctic and as thick as 4,000 meters in the deserts. However, the average thickness is around 300 meters. Thanks to several prominent scientists, today we can solve the equations that govern the atmospheric boundary layer. One of the main factors that will affect the variation of the wind speed is the surface roughness. The higher that roughness is, the bigger reduction of the free wind stream speed we will have closer to the Earth's surface. We can see the effect for a given wind speed at 300 meters. So now we can understand why engineers are looking for technological evolutions that help them in making bigger rotors, at higher hub heights. These trends allow for higher energy capture, reducing the effect of the turbulence caused by the surface. Next video we will go into the basics of the wind turbine rotor design. Thanks for watching.